And that is what we will revive this November when we send Donald J. Trump back to the White House. Thank you all. God bless you and your families. And may God bless our United States of America. Thank you. You know, I'll be honest. When Vivek Ramaswamy suspended his campaign for presidency, I was a little bit bummed. I mean, I know he didn't stand a chance against Donald Trump in the Republican primaries, but I kind of wish Trump chose him for a VP. Because every time Vivek speaks, one of two things happen. I get super emotional, or I just get super revved up. Because on top of making me proud to be an American, he speaks with conviction, he commands a room every time, and he is a unifying force in many ways. I mean, the guy's more relatable to my generation of people. Going on the Flagrant podcast, hanging out with the Paul brothers, and he meets people where they are, like he's done with this LGBTQ protester. I believe that transgenderism specifically is a mental health disorder. <laughs> I believe it's a mental health condition. Okay. I'll, well, I, no, 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 we're going to finish this. This is good. I want, we have to have open conversation in this country. But I don't think the comp- a thing to do. Well, it's how they feel. Well, let me, let me, let me. If, I'm going to give you a chance to respond if you like, but no, we I can't have an open me. debate in this country if we're not able to state our views. That's how they feel. This is, they have how they feel. And you know what? When a young person shows up and says, Wait, my gender what? doesn't match my biological sex, they're asking for help. This is what's wrong in this country. We will look back at this and say this was barbaric that we allowed this to happen in this country. That is not compassion. That is cruelty. And so I don't think the right thing to do is I'm not going to villainize those people. You don't villainize people who are going through suffering, but you have to be willing to say when a kid shows up and says, my gender doesn't match my biological sex, you have to be able to say, what else is going wrong at home? What else might be going wrong at school? Get to the bottom of what's going on. Help that person with compassion, with dignity. If you're an adult, you're free to live your life however you want as long as you're not hurting somebody else. If you're a man, you can dress how you want. If you're a woman, you can dress how you want. Identify how you want. We're a free country and I'm not going to stop you. But kids are not the same as adults. And we have to protect our children. And we can't change the way that women and men compete in sports. We can't do that. We can allow you to live your life the way you want to. But we can't change the way that we operate in our own life. And I'll, I'm going to finish this thought and then you get to respond. Because I think this is good. We don't do this enough. Open debate. I love this. You are free to live your life the way you wish to, as long as you don't hurt anybody else in return. And I'm free to do the same thing too. But that doesn't mean we change the way men and women compete in sports. And despite being hostile in the beginning, she eventually came around. You agree with me on that? I hate you. I hate you. You agree with me on that? All right. Dude, that's different. Because men should be swimming with women in women's sports competitions. Thank you. And he's also done that with college protesters. I was just going to invite you in. I didn't expect them to come. What's your name? My name is Gabe. And are you a student here? I am. Yeah. Actually... Would you like to come in and join us? Because I know you've been vo- very vocal yeah. for this. We want to come in? You're welcome. Uh, you don't have to. You don't. All my stuff. Bring it on in. You don't have to be. I just wanted you to know that you don't. You don't have to be outside. You're allowed in. Okay. Um, I was actually told that I couldn't bring signs in before. Well, so. you know what? I'll have something to do with that. So you can bring in signs if you want, but. Who needs the signs when you have your own voice? Come on in and William give you a chance to ask a question just like everybody else. Does that work for you? I thought if we're gonna hear you from outside, we might as well hear you inside. So come on in, man. Come on, we'll give you a hand. I'll give you a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, actually the, the strap is caught on. There you go. Come on. We'll carry your water for you. Come on in. Pun intended. There you go, yeah. All right. Hi, Mike. Come on in. Join us. What year are you? I'm a sophomore. You're a sophomore? Yes. Okay, good. Good. We know. You know. And he calls things out unapologetically. Like when Steven Crowder insinuated that Vivek's skin color frees him up to say what other Republicans can't. No one's more hardline in believing that the sole purpose of immigration policy in the United States needs to be to advance the interests of U.S. citizens who are already here. But, Steve, I think the thing that bothers me is why the hell am I the only person in the Republican Party who has the guts to say English should be our national language? I know. Why am I the only person who can actually offer a legal argument for why we should be able to end birthright citizenship without a constitutional amendment? And so the irony to me is I think I can answer that. I can answer that. Yeah. It's because of the color of your skin. And I don't mean that, I, 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 I'm yeah, saying you I do, you are inoculated, that. you know, for someone who looks like she's straight no, from no, the I, I just, I disagree with that. I'm going to be back at you, Steve. I'm going to hit you hard for that. That is because the rest of you are freaking lazy. And Cowards. the conservative movement has grown lazy. Cowards. Cowards, People yeah. in this country have common sense. What we really lack is courage. Yes. So I'm not going to buy some BS that like my last name or my skin color insulates me. 
think about it. I had to step no, down but that's, from the, my per- that's the perception. You have balls, but I'm, other I'm, people I'm, won't we'll, criticize you. But we'll just, we'll, but we'll just, we'll just level it. This is what having some fun here. I get this from white friends all the time. Good-hearted people. It's like I love that you can say it because I can't. My right. answer is bull. You're just a coward. Mm-hmm. Stand up and actually say it. Yep. Stand for your actual convictions because if you can't stand for your convictions, you don't have any at all. But the- and he showed all that fire at the RNC this week. Love it. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the warm welcome. It's good to be back in Milwaukee. <laughs> this time last year, I was a candidate for U.S. president, and I'm proud to say that I achieved the impossible, which is that most of you actually know how to say my name by now. So, so thank you for that. It's good to be back. We're in the middle of a national identity crisis right now. Faith, patriotism, hard work, and family have disappeared, only to be replaced by race, gender, sexuality, and climate. But we're not going to win this election just by criticizing the other side. We're going to win this by standing for our own vision of who we really are. What does it mean to be a Republican in the year 2024? What does it mean to be an American in the year 2024? It means we believe in the ideals of 1776. It means we believe in merit that you get ahead in this country, not on the color of your skin, but on the content of your character and your contributions. It means we believe in the rule of law. And I say this as the kid of legal immigrants to this country. That means your first act of entering this country cannot break the law. That is why we will seal the southern border on day one. That's right. No more of this catch and release crap where these illegal immigrants start out committing what are probably petty crimes, but then you keep letting them go, and then they go on to commit even more major crimes, such as murder. These are not black ideas or white ideas. They are not even Democrat ideas or Republican ideas. They are American ideas that we fought a revolution to secure, and the man who will revive these ideals in the United States of America is your next president, the 47th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. If you want to seal the border, vote Trump. If you want to restore law and order in this country, vote Trump. If you want to reignite the economy in this country, vote Trump. If you want to revive national pride in this country, vote Trump. If you want to make America great again, vote Trump. But there is one more reason I'm going to ask you to vote Trump, and it's the most important one. It's the one the media won't talk about, but it's the truth. Donald Trump is the president who will actually unite this country, not through empty words, but through action. Because you know what? Success is unifying. Excellence is unifying. That's who we are as Americans. That's who we've always been. To those of you watching this at home tonight, I'd like to deliver a message that the media doesn't want you to hear from the Republican Party. Our message to black Americans is this. The media has tried to convince you for decades that Republicans don't care about your communities, but we do. We want for you what we want for every American. Safe neighborhoods, clean streets, good jobs, a better life for your children, and a justice system that treats everyone equally, regardless of your skin color and regardless of your political beliefs. Okay, I love this because he just said regardless of your skin color and the white Trump supporters were in agreement. Now we know that if you're white and a Trump supporter, you're sometimes written off as a racist without people getting to know you first. But what's more, when you're African American and you're gonna vote for Trump or any other race for that matter, you're somehow acting against your own best interest. And I can somewhat relate in the sense that I've received comments like this, saying I'm simping for the party that would throw me out of the country if they could have it their way. Ignoring things like how 2018, Donald Trump signed the Bipartisan First Step Act, a bill to promote rehabilitation, lower recidivism, and reduce excessive sentences in the federal prison system. And in 2019, signed a bipartisan bill to permanently provide more than $250 million a year to historically African-American colleges. And CNN, of anyone acknowledging that under Trump, African-American unemployment was at the lowest it had been. And latest polls show that 70% of African-American voters, more than twice that in 2016, would back Trump. Which at the end of the day, everybody just wants to feel respected. 
everyone wants to have the autonomy and the agency to make decisions for themselves, not be sold some bill of goods that you must vote a certain type of way because of your race. That is racism disguised as altruism, convincing somebody or trying to convince somebody that you know what's in their best interest better than they do. And I'm not African-American, so I'm not going to definitively say that life was better for them under Donald Trump. But I will say that if there is an African-American who feels that way, they should not be treated like a charlatan for it. Which kind of goes back to the point that Vivek was alluding to. Our message to every legal immigrant in this country is this. You're like my parents. You deserve the opportunity to secure a better life for your children in America. But our message to illegal immigrants is also this. We will return you to your country of origin, not because you're all bad people, but because you broke the law. And the United States of America was founded on the rule of law. Our government sold us a false bill of goods, loading up our national debt that falls on our generation's shoulders, telling us that if we took out college loans, we'd somehow get a head start on the American dream when it hasn't worked out that way. But we can't just be cynical about our country because the United States of America is still the last best hope that we have, and we deserve a better class of politician, one who actually tells us the truth, even if it comes with some mean tweets from time to time. And our message to Gen Z is this. You're going to be the generation that actually saves this country. You want to be a rebel? You want to be a hippie? You want to stick it to the man? Show up on your college campus and try calling yourself a conservative. Now, apparently, this point angered AOC, who took to X to say young people don't take well to bigoted leaders who attack LGBTQ rights, outlaw abortion, cozy up to gun manufacturers and oil execs, and support an R-word for president. If you want to be cool so badly, try giving a damn about other people beyond yourself. Might open a few doors. To which Vivek gave her a reality check saying the GOP platform does not oppose gay marriage and does not support a federal abortion ban. Stop misleading your followers and admit they're freaking out because they're losing their voter base. To have a debate on merit, not lies, as it would be good for your party and good for our country. Which these days, the Supreme Court is taking a softer approach to gay marriage. And they're not outright banning abortion. It's a state-by-state issue. And people see just how desperate someone like AOC is to get people to vote on her side of the political aisle, and they're seeing right through the lies. And that's been a big part, I think, of people, for example, in my generation, shifting to the Republican side. And I also believe people like Vivek are instrumental in that tide shifting. Because you know what? Fear has been infectious in this country, but courage can be contagious too. That too is what it means to be an American. And you know what? If you're at home and you disagree with everything I just said, our message to you is this. We will still defend to the death your right to say it because that is who we are as Americans. We are the country where we can disagree like hell and still get together at the dinner table at the end of it. That is the America I know. That is the America we miss. We do not have to be ancient Rome. We don't have to be this nation in decline. We can still be a nation in our ascent. A nation whose best days, not in some fake politician way, but in a true way, a nation whose best days are actually still ahead of us. Still on our way to that shining city on a hill, that country where no matter who you are, or where your parents came from, or what your skin color is, or how long your last name is, that you will still get ahead in this country with your own hard work, your own commitment, your own dedication, and that you know what, you are free to speak your mind at every step of the way. That is the American dream. That is what won us the American Revolution. That is what reunited us after the Civil War. That is what won us two world wars and the Cold War. That is what still gives hope to the free world. And if we can revive that dream over group identity and victimhood and grievance, then nobody in the world, not a nation, not a corporation, not a virus, not China, is going to defeat us. That is what American exceptionalism is all about. And that is what we will revive this November when we send Donald J. Trump back to the White House 
Thank you all. God bless you and your families. And may God bless our United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. I swear, every time he speaks, I get chills. And I'm stealing this idea from Brandon Tatum. I gotta give credit where credit is due. But he said, and I kind of agree with this actually, that the reason Donald Trump chose J.D. Vance over Vivek is because Vivek would outshine Donald Trump. Not in popularity necessarily, but in areas like intellect. And so I understand why Donald Trump made the decision that he did. At the same time though, I do think in 2028, should Vivek decide to run again, he'll have a fair chance. Because what this country needs more than anything right now is unity and a strong commitment to faith, to merit, and to patriotism. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, hopefully I've earned a subscription. Here's some videos for you to watch in the meantime. Until next time, peace out.